Need funding for your real estate investment deal? Longhorn Investments is professional, reliable, and fast. Currently serving Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, Missouri, Alabama, and Indiana, Longhorn Investments LLC is a direct private lender offering short-term acquisition and renovation capital to real estate investors for both residential and commercial assets. With Longhorn Investments, you can receive up to 75% of ARV, finance up to 100% of cost, close in three to five business days, no income requirements, a streamlined simple approval process, and no prepayment penalty. Formed in 2008, Longhorn Investments has funded over 4,000 loans since its inception and includes complementary businesses, including a title company and real estate law practice. Longhorn's wealth of experience puts them in the unique position of being able to help investors throughout all aspects of each transaction. To get started today and see why Longhorn Investments is the superior lending experience, call and speak to Lawrence Hopkins at 314-749-7616. That's 314-749-7616. Or visit Longhorn Investments at longhorninvestments.com. Longhorn Investments. Hard money lending simplified. Universe. Media. Network. 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 Good day. I'm Samantha Smith with your United States Real Estate Investing News. With the eviction moratorium extended even further, small United States landlords who operate about 23 million units are beginning to lose their patience under the pandemic control of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Quoting CNBC, the one-month extension of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's eviction moratorium was welcome news for tenants but another nail in the coffin for some struggling landlords. Groups representing landlords had been lobbying hard to end the moratorium and now warn even another month will put some of those landlords out of business. Each passing month further escalates the risk of losing an ever-increasing amount of rental housing, ultimately jeopardizing the availability of safe, sustainable and affordable housing for all Americans, wrote Bob Pinnegar, CEO of the National Apartment Association, in a release. Flawed eviction moratoriums leave renters with insurmountable debt and housing providers holding the bag as our nation's housing affordability crisis spirals into a housing affordability disaster. The majority of the nation's landlords are individual investors. They own about 23 million units in 17 million properties, according to the U.S. Census. More than 6 million renter households are behind on rent, also according to the Census. Landlords have next to no recourse. Howard Simon owns a small building in Massachusetts with three rental units. He hasn't received the rent on one of them since last October and is out about $7,000 so far. I have mortgages, I have expenses for repairs to that particular building, I'm losing one-third of the rent just because of this, said Simon. And you know the other tenants who are occupying the other two units, they're trying their hardest and doing their best. While the U.S. government tries to provide tenants with solutions, many of the country's landlords feel that they are continually dropping the monetary ball. Again, quoting CNBC, still, landlords say they are angry at the way the federal aid, $46 billion from two different relief packages, has been both allocated and distributed. If the rental assistance bureaucracy is a monster, then the local governments that created them are Dr. Frankenstein, said Dean Hunter, CEO of the Small Multifamily Owners Association and a landlord himself. They've required the states and the cities to create entire new infrastructures to get the money out, instead of using the existing community-based organizations and safety nets. Hunter contends that small landlords are being treated like large corporations but instead should have been included in the Small Business Relief Package, the Paycheck Protection Program. This is the most excessively and overly broad taking of private property in my lifetime, said Hunter. The eviction moratorium is killing small landlords, not the pandemic. After extending the moratorium, the Biden administration outlined measures it would take to further assist both renters and landlords. It said the U.S. Treasury would clarify how grantees may achieve economies of scale by obtaining information in bulk from utility providers and landlords with multiple units to help speed the determination of household eligibility and to bundle, in a single payment, approved amounts for the benefit of multiple eligible tenants. That, and other efforts from state and local governments, should help some, but if landlords don't get the relief they need, there will be ramifications for the wider housing market. What there is going to be a tsunami of is a loss of naturally occurring, affordable housing, because small landlords are going to sell their properties, said Hunter. End quote. Large investment firms may be creating even bigger competition for small independent landlords by way of emerging real estate technologies. Quoting Bloomberg, 
Goldman Sachs Group Inc. led a $32 million investment in a startup that enables single-family landlords to acquire rental properties, an increasingly competitive corner of the real estate market. And Terra parses property records to help landlords, home flippers and other investors match real estate listings to their buying criteria and make instantaneous decisions on how much to bid on a given property. Its clients include Invitation Homes Inc., the largest single-family landlord, property records show. The company, whose software has fueled the acquisition of nearly $1 billion in properties since it launched in 2018, plans to use the new capital to continue expanding the services it offers. We've had insatiable demand from our customers, who want to spend a whole bunch of money, Chief Executive Officer Martin Kay said in an interview. We are trying to build everything we need to service existing customers and continue to grow. For decades, large investors mostly ignored single-family homes, viewing the properties as difficult to acquire and costly to operate. The U.S. foreclosure crisis let Wall Street firms buy homes cheaply and build property management systems. The industry also got a boost with demand from families who wanted to live in the suburbs but couldn't afford a down payment. Kay was a technology executive who started investing in real estate around the same time, when he came to believe that software would be key as single-family landlords built scale. The system his company developed starts by analyzing property records for all the single-family real estate in a given area. Homes are logged based on physical characteristics, local amenities and neighborhood demographics. Entera then matches investors to homes as they hit the market. Entera, which currently operates in 24 geographic areas across the U.S., helps clients negotiate with sellers, manage transactions and find service providers for construction and property management. The company has seen increased demand from customers during the COVID-19 pandemic, which has boosted the market for larger suburban living spaces and pushed real estate investors shunning hotels and office buildings toward rental houses. Blackstone Group Inc., KKR & Co., and Brookfield Asset Management Inc. are among the companies to make new investments in single-family rentals since the pandemic began. A broader field of Wall Street firms, meanwhile, has committed billions of dollars to buying or building rental houses. Goldman is backing the startup through its investing arm, Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Bullpen Capital, Kraft Ventures and ValueStream Ventures also invested in the round. And Terra stands out by combining technology that helps investors decide which homes to buy with the ability to complete transactions, Paul Pate, a vice president in the growth equity business at Goldman Sachs Asset Management, said in an email. As a result, Antera is both a beneficiary and an enabler of the growing single-family rental asset class, Pate said. End quote. According to Realtor.com, new June listings increased 5.5% with 10 of the country's largest markets showing that the highest new listings increases posted gains of 20% or more from a year ago. Is this a sign that we are slowly coming out of the woods? Here's more on the story quoted from CNBC. The epic housing shortage that began before the pandemic and then was exacerbated by it may finally be starting to ease up. More supply is suddenly coming on the market, which will certainly help frustrated buyers and could, in the longer term, take some of the heat out of home prices. In June, new listings increased 5.5% year-over-year and 10.9% compared with May, according to Realtor.com. Among the nation's larger cities, the 10 markets with the highest new listings increases posted gains of 20% or more from a year ago. Although there's still a significant shortage of homes for sale and home prices just hit a new high, our June data report shows good news on the horizon for buyers, said Realtor.com senior economist George Radiu. Inventory declines improved over the steep drop seen earlier in the pandemic as sellers stepped back into the market in a variety of price ranges across the country. The jump in inventory is surprising, because new listings historically fall between May and June, following the busy spring market. Today's housing market, however, isn't following the usual rules, since the pandemic created unprecedented sudden demand for larger suburban homes. The improvement we saw in new listings growth from May to June shows sellers are entering the market historically later in the season, which could mean we'll see home buying continue into the fall as buyers jump at new opportunities, added Radio. The unexpected new supply is certainly welcome news for home buyers, many of whom have been sidelined in bidding wars, but the market is still extremely lean. The inventory of homes for sale was down 43.1% year-over-year at the end of May, representing 415,000 fewer homes for sale on a typical day in June. That is, however, an improvement from the more than 50% decline seen in March, April and May. New listings, again, were higher, but still well below the pre-pandemic average for June. Still, the new supply is giving some frustrated buyers more to choose from. 
In Washington, D.C., where the market is extraordinarily tight, it has been common to see most listings sell within a week or two for well over asking price. New listings were up 36% in June from a year ago, but total supply is still down 9%. What I'm seeing is the market is easing ever so slightly, said Jennifer Myers, founder and owner of Dwell Real Estate Brokerage. That means that more people are going under contract for their next home, which in turn means more listings are coming up because those people are now able to sell their current home. Little hinges swing big doors, as they say. In the Dallas-Fort Worth market, which has seen major demand recently from California transplants, new listings actually fell 5% in June and total supply is down 59% from a year ago. Still, the month's supply, which is a calculation involving how much is selling compared with how much is for sale, did rise slightly. Yes, but not by too much, said Laura Barnett with RE, Max DFW Association. But it typically goes down after July. The demand goes down a bit as well for suburban areas that focus on the school year. But since this is a strange year, I am not sure what will happen. Cities seeing the largest increase in new listings are mostly in the Midwest. Milwaukee, with a 45% increase, Cleveland, with 38%, and Columbus, Ohio, with 26%, topped the list. As an outlier, San Jose, California, one of the priciest markets in the nation, saw new listings spike 41%. Phoenix, which had very strong pandemic-induced demand from Northeast transplants, saw new listings up 28%. On the flip side, Miami, which was probably the most popular destination for New York transplants in the last year, saw new listings decline 8%. Other southern cities, such as Raleigh, North Carolina, and Nashville, Tennessee, also saw sizable declines. If more homes continue to come on the market, along with a steady increase in new construction, the housing boom will slowly pull back. It is unlikely, however, to decline sharply, or, bust, simply due to favorable demographics and still historically low mortgage rates. If these trends persist, inventory declines and price growth may continue to moderate as the housing market returns to a more normal pace of activity heading into the second half of 2021, Radio said. End quote. For our quick content suggestions this week, we have Building America's Roofs and Taking on Elon Musk, from Forbes, and the Dream of Florida is Dead, from Slate. To research further, see links and more from these reports in the news notes. I'm Samantha Smith for United States Real Estate Investor News, United States Real Estate Investor.com. Let's face it, your property is ugly as f. ARS Construction does it right, from roofing to exterior to all your interior needs. For a free roofing estimate, call now at 844-445-ROOF. That's 844-445-7663. Or visit advancedroofsys.com. That's advancedroofsys.com. ARS Construction. Roofing and construction done right.